In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this cool pop art effect using Adobe Photoshop. Now to get started, we're going to need two things on hand. The first is a portrait either of ourselves or a friend against a plain backdrop. So the example I'm going to be using today was just found on Google. It's not very high quality, but it's the kind of image we're looking for. We've got our model doing a good pose and she's against a plain green screen in this case, which is a plain backdrop. If you don't have a green screen, that's fine. You can just find a plain wall in your house. Just make sure you've got some lights on you when you take a photo so you're well lit and snap away one photo. Make sure you do a cool little pose as well. doesn't have to be the same as this, but a posed photo does look a little bit more edgy, I suppose. Once you've got your portrait, you also need to get yourself a picture of a texture. And you can just find one of these on Google Images. There's plenty getting around if you just go and search something like rustic texture. You'll find heaps of different textures there. That you can use. Um, just click on them and download them into your onto your computer, and you're ready to go. Basically, so you got your texture, you've got your portrait, and you're ready to create some pop art. So jump into Photoshop and make yourself a new file. Let's, actually, we'll start with the name of our file up here today. We'll call it Pop Art, and we'll set the sizes to 1,200 pixels by 1,200 pixels. Okay, that's going to make a square shape for us. Because I'm going to be using this image online only, I'm going to set it to 72 pixels per inch resolution and RGB color mode. If you were going to print your pop art, you'll probably want to change that resolution to 300 pixels per inch, so it's got a lot more depth to it, which means it's going to print out a lot clearer and crisper. And it'd be worth changing your color mode to CMYK. But that's only if you're printing. Since I'm not, I'm going to go back to 72 pixels per inch and RGB color mode. I'll click on create and you'll get your empty white canvas up on the screen. Now the first thing I want to do with this canvas is split it into four quadrants. So if we look at the original, we've got four different images, all the same size, um, split up into the four quadrants. So that's what we want to do first of all. And to do that, you're going to need to use rulers, which you can see on the left hand side and the top of my document here. If you can't see rulers in your um, document, just press Control R on your keyboard and that shows and hides your rulers. So we want them showing at the moment. You also need to right click on one of the rulers, either one, either the top or the left, and make sure the measurements are in pixels. And all you need to do now is drag these rulers onto the page and snap them into a position. So the position we want this top one dragged to is down the Y axis at the 600 pixel mark, which is halfway down the page, it will actually snap into that position as you near that 600 pixel mark. And the same goes for the um, x-axis ruler. As we bring it across, when you get near 600 pixels, pixels, it'll actually snap into position to show you that that's the center of the page. And we've now got our four quadrants all made up. So I'm going to leave that as is for now. I might actually save it first. I'm just going to call it Pop Art. And we're going to come back to this document later in the tutorial. But for now, we're going to make another new document. Now, this time, the document doesn't need a name. The width and the height are going to be 600 pixels. So it's just going to be the size of one of these quadrants, 600 by 600. And we'll stick with 72 resolution, so 72 pixels per inch and RGB color mode. We'll click on Create. So we've got another empty white canvas on our screen. And this is where we want to bring our photo in either of ourselves or of a model. So just drag and drop it in. That's the quickest way to do it. Um, hopefully your image will be nice and big and it fills that entire space up. But mine is quite small, pretty average quality. So I'm going to have to stretch it out a bit here to make it fit. So I just don't want to see her body too much. That's pretty good there, I think. So when you're happy with the size of your image, hit the tick at the top just to apply those changes. And you should have something looking like this at the moment. Next thing I want you to do is bring up your layers box. And you can do that by pressing F7 on your keyboard, or you can find it down here on the right hand side. If that's not working, you can always go to your window menu too and select layers to bring it up. Now you can see in your layers here, you've got two layers with a background and the portrait layer. The background serves no purpose, so just hit the trash can on that and delete it. And we should be just left with our portrait layer. Now with our portrait layer selected, I want you to right click on it and choose the option here that says Convert to Smart Object. That's just going to allow us to apply some adjustment layers in a moment to our image to change the look of it. 
Okay, so the first thing we're going to be applying to this portrait up in our layer menu. Under new adjustment layer, I want you to go to threshold. Now threshold, oh sorry, it's going to ask for a name first of all. For that new layer, just leave it as threshold 1. Click OK. Now threshold is going to change it to this um, black and white kind of look. And you'll see that in the properties box that appears, you've got a little lever that you can move around to get different effects with this threshold. What we are looking for is the sweet spot that removes this black background, but still gives us plenty of detail in our model. So for me, I'm just going to keep sliding this to the left a little bit. So 113 is my threshold level where I get a nice clear white background, but still plenty of detail in my model. So that's what you need to look for with yours. It works well for some photos, other photos it doesn't work quite as well. So you may need to even retake your photo if it's not working too well. But hopefully you get something looking like that. All right, so that's my threshold um, filter I'll effect applied. What I want to do now, so I look at my layers here, I've still got my portrait and my threshold effect. I want to make sure I'm still clicked on this threshold layer. And I'm going to go back up to the layer menu, go to new adjustment layer, and this time choose a gradient map. It's going to ask for a name for this layer, just leave it as gradient map 1 and click OK. And you'll probably have a different looking gradient map effect to me at the moment, but mine starts with a blue and a grey. Okay, if yours is something different, that's fine. What I need you to do is just click on this color bar. A lot of people usually start with black and white, which is what we're actually looking for in this case. So when you click that color bar, you get this gradient editor box appear. And in the, in the presets option here under basics, I just want you to choose this one here that has the black in the top left corner and white in the bottom right corner. That's the gradient that goes from black and fades across into white. That's what we're looking for. Now you can change the color of this gradient. That's what we're going to be doing here. We're going to be changing the black first of all. So if you click on this little bottom padlock down here, not the top one, but the bottom one, and you can either double click on it to bring up a color box, or you can click on it once and go down to color at the bottom here. And I want you to select, not quite pitch black, I want you to go up a little bit and choose like a darkish gray. So it's not quite black, but it's almost black. We'll click OK. At the other end of the scale here, we've got the white padlock. If you double click on that, choose a bright color. So I'm going to choose this bright pink color. And you can now see that pop art effect starting to come into place. So click OK a couple of times and you can get rid of your properties there because that is our pop art effect done for the first image. So what I'm going to do now is in my layers panel here, I'm going to select all of the layers. So you can do that by clicking I'm oh, sorry, holding down control and clicking on each of the layers. That selects all three layers. I'm going to right click my mouse and I'm going to flatten that image. That's going to combine all three layers together into one single layer. And that's going to allow me to now copy and paste that over to my original document. So if I go to the select menu at the top and select all, you can see the bounding box appear around the outside of my image to show that it's selected. I'm going to copy that and then paste it into my original document. And using the move tool, I'm just going to plonk that up in the top left hand quadrant. First one done. Now if I go back to this document here, I'm going to go to edit and undo a couple of times here until these layers come back. Okay, so basically I'm unflattening the image. And with this gradient map, I want you to double click on the little picture here that has the gradient itself where it fades from black to white. If you double click it, it's going to bring our properties back up. And we can click on this color bar and change that pink to something else. So let's change it to say a bright yellow. And click OK a couple of times and now we've got that nice bright yellow effect. And we're just going to repeat this process by holding down control and selecting all three layers. I'm going to right click and flatten the image again so it all combines into one layer. I'll go up to select and select it all and copy and paste it over to my original. I'll just move it now up into the top right and that will snap in nicely inside that top right hand quadrant. So that's half my artwork done already. 
back to this original here. I'm going to undo it twice. So all my layers come back. Double click on the gradient map, and this time I'm going to go for another color. So let's go for a bright green this time. Click OK a couple of times. We're going to select all the layers and flatten the image. Select all, copy and paste. Okay, and I'm moving quick here, but feel free to slow the video down if you'd like. We're just going to do that one more time now, so I'll undo those effects twice to get my layers back. Double click on the gradient map. And the final color I'm going to choose, you can choose whatever colors you want, but I'm going to go with this bright blue, so a cyan kind of color. Remember to select all the layers and flatten the image one last time. Oops, we need to select all, edit copy, back to the original and edit paste. And we're going to move that down to the bottom right hand corner. Alright, so that is looking pretty good. So next thing I'm going to do is get rid of these rulers. We don't need them anymore. So to get rid of rulers, you just click on them, or the x-axis, uh, sorry, the y-axis one, and just drag it up the top, it disappears. Grab the x-axis one and drag it all the way to the left, and it disappears. Okay, so our pop art is looking pretty good, but the one thing that's going to take it to a whole new level is um, adding a texture onto it. And it needs to go on top of all the layers. So from my account here where I've got my texture save, I'm going to bring it out and drop it into Photoshop. And that will appear straight over the top of all my images. I'm going to need to stretch it out because I want to get rid of the little watermark that's in the bottom right corner. And I also want to cover up the entire image. So just stretch it out. And feel free to move it around so I can see there's a few more splattery kind of effects over here on this, I guess it's a stone or a rock or something that it's a photo of. Press the tick at the top to apply the changes and you've now got this texture covering up your pop art. What we're going to do is we're going to blend it in with those images and then lower the opacity so it becomes transparent. So if we click on this texture layer and where you've got this drop down box over here in your layers, that's your blending modes. You've got different blend modes. So if you go through each of these, you can see different ways you can blend the images together. Okay, you choose one which you think looks best. There's multiple ones here that look good, but the one I'm probably going to run with is Linear Burn at this stage. I know it looks a bit rough at the moment, but if I change the opacity, so that's how transparent this texture layer is. If I drop that right down to around, say, 15 to 20%, it becomes quite subtle. If I zoom in here, you can still see that sort of rough looking texture in the background, but it's quite hard to see. You barely notice it's there, but it does add so much more to the image. If I have it too high, I think it looks quite tacky. Doesn't, this looks dirty, that image, but if you just lower it right down, so as I said, between 15 20%, that's going to look quite good. So I'm just going to hide that layers box now and get out of the way. And that's our piece of pop art all finished. So to save it up, you can save it as a PSD document like we did before, if you want to preserve those layers and come back and edit them later. But if you're fully done, let's reduce the file size by simply going to export and choosing quick export as PNG and just leave it as pop art, click save, and you are done. So that's how you create a fairly simple and pretty cool looking pop art effect in Adobe Photoshop.